Central Texas is known for two things, their vibrant live music scene and their mastery of slow smoked barbecue. Welcome to the first episode of Barbecue Passport, where we're diving into the tradition of Central Texas barbecue and how it came to be today. We'll then take those techniques and we'll apply them to some monster beef ribs and you don't want to miss that. Hey there, I'm Joe, and this is Barbecue Passport, the series where we'll be discovering incredible barbecue in every corner of the planet. Today, our journey takes us to Central Texas, an area known for its mastery of smoked meats. But in this series, we'll discover everything from Central Texas barbecue to the Asado Cruz of Argentina to the Whole Hog Barbecue of South Carolina. So if you're excited to dive into the barbecue of these regions, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So in these episodes, I'll be diving into the stories behind the smoke, the techniques passed down through generations, and the flavors that define these regions. It's not just about smoking and tasting the food, it's about experiencing the world through the lens of barbecue. Central Texas stands as a towering pillar in the world of barbecue. It's known for its dedication to simplicity, quality, and the art of slow smoking. In Central Texas, it's all about the cattle, being transformed using a very simple rub smoked over a very particular piece of wood. But what makes Central Texas barbecue truly iconic isn't just the briskets or the beef ribs. It's the tradition and the history. And today we're on a journey to uncover how Central Texas barbecue carved its name into the very essence of American barbecue culture. The story of Central Texas barbecue is really a story that's woven into the very fabric of Texas. It has a narrative that's rich in the spirit of innovation, community, and cultural integration. So the origins of Central Texas barbecue as we know it today really dates back to the late 19th century when German and Czech settlers set foot in Texas. And when they came to Texas, they brought with them the practice of smoking food, which was really a necessity to preserve food without refrigeration. Yet it was the abundance of cattle herds in Texas from the farmers and ranchers that really set the stage for what Central Texas barbecue is today. And when they come together, they create the hallmark of Central Texas barbecue, which is its unwavering preference for beef, a very simple rub, and a type of wood that is abundant in the hills of Texas. But the evolution of barbecue in Central Texas was not just about preservation. It was also about community. In the era of cattle drives, you had the chuck wagon. And the chuck wagon was really the heart and drive, and it's where the cooks would prepare beef for the cowboys. This practice not only fed the cowboys, but it really sowed the seeds for the communal barbecue culture that we see in Central Texas today. And local farmers and ranchers played a pivotal role in this happening. Because cattle was so abundantly available in Texas, it became the cornerstone of Central Texas barbecue. And their use of post oak wood for smoking really became the distinctive flavor that is synonymous with Central Texas barbecue. Now, and slowly over time, as towns grew and the frontier began to close, the role of barbecue went from a necessity to really more of a celebration. And it became the centerpiece of community gatherings. It was at your church picnics, at your political rallies. Anytime you had an excuse to get together, it was because of barbecue. And it was during these gatherings that the true essence of Central Texas barbecue began to crystallize. And then slowly over time, the grocery stores and the meat markets would eventually transition into legitimate barbecue joints, and that would become their primary focus. And these establishments eventually went from smoking meat to preserve it to gradually becoming temples of barbecue that we revere today. And that's places like Franklin's, Terry Black's, Snow's. There are so many iconic barbecue joints in Central Texas, and they all owe their existence to the Czechs, Germans, farmers, ranchers, cowboys, just an amalgamation of events that happened to make them who they are today. In Central Texas, barbecue is really more than a food. It's a testament to the melting pot of cultures that shaped a region, a celebration of community and togetherness, and a living history that continues to grow while staying true to its roots. And remember, as we explore the nuances of Central Texas barbecue, each bite is a taste of history and a tribute to the generations of pit masters who have kept this tradition going. Central Texas barbecue stands out not just for its storied past, but for the distinct elements that define its present. Now, if you've ever talked to anyone from Texas, particularly Central Texas, you'll understand quickly that they have a very particular way of smoking meat. They believe that it should be done this way, and it comes down to three elements. You have your meat selection, the type of wood that you smoke with, and the type of seasoning that's put on the beef. And together, those three things create something that is unmistakably Central Texas barbecue. Now at the heart of Central Texas barbecue, there lies the unwavering preference for beef. And it's really a nod to the sprawling cattle herds that's in Texas. But it's not just any beef that makes the cut. 
It's normally two cuts of beef. You have your brisket, which requires a low and slow smoking process. And I'm telling you, it's a challenging smoke. It's gonna test your patience. It's gonna test your skill. Did I say patience? You're gonna be smoking a brisket for a long time. Now, personally, my favorite, which is the second cut, is the beef ribs, particularly ones that they call dino ribs, but they're cut from the sixth, seventh, and eighth bone on the beef rib. Now, your second element is gonna be your wood choice, and that's gonna be post oak. Now, post oak was something that's been used since the beginning of time in Texas. They have post oak abundantly available, so that's what they smoke with. It offers a really nice, steady cook for long periods of time. It offers a very distinct, smoky flavor that you're not gonna get with other pieces of wood. It doesn't offer too strong of a smoke flavor like a hickory, but it's very distinct and it's synonymous with Central Texas barbecue. And lastly, it's gonna be the rub. In the world of Central Texas barbecue, they adhere to the art of simplicity. It's a minimalist rub of salt and pepper. Also, sometimes referred to as a Dalmatian rub. And that is all that goes on the meat before it goes in the smoker. And this less is more approach puts a spotlight on the beef and the smoking process itself. So salt's been available for centuries and it was really a no brainer. Everyone once saw it preserves meat, makes meat taste better. No brainer. As for pepper, it was more of a European thing. So the Czech and immigrants actually brought that with them because they were accustomed to cooking with it. So over time, smoking with just salt and pepper really became a matter of regional identity and pride. And as barbecue evolved from open pit cooking to more of a controlled method, the importance of the beef flavor and the smoke flavor really became more paramount. And pit masters learned that using too heavy of a rub that was really complex that outside of the salt and pepper would really interfere with the smoke's ability to penetrate the meat and would affect the natural taste of the beef. So the salt would actually draw the moisture out of the beef, creating a bark, while pepper adds a mild heat that really complements the smoke flavor. And this style really became the signature of Central Texas barbecue, distinguishing it from other regions that might have more complex rubs or sauces. So these elements, the meticulously selected beef, the subtle touch of the post oak wood, and the restrained hand in seasoning come together in a symphony of flavors that's as straightforward and honest as Texas itself. And these three elements are the pillars at which Texas barbecue is. Now that we've learned about the history of Central Texas and the elements that make up their barbecue, let's see what all this hype is about and smoke up some big ass ribs. Also known as beef short ribs. <laughs> So the first thing to start is we're gonna trim these beef ribs. Some people do, some people don't. Majority of the people in Central Texas that I talk to do trim their beef rib, and there's evidence to support that they trimmed it in the late 19th century in Central Texas as well. Usually to help with uh, dealing with flare-ups or they would render down that fat or they'd use it in sausage or whatever else. So we're not gonna take off a lot of this fat, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off just the top layer of the silver skin. That way it can render down I've cooked this with uh, the fat cap on before, and I kind of felt like the fat kind of exploded a little bit, like kind of got swelled up, got big, and there was like a good three-fourths an inch layer of fat. It was terrible. So I like to uh, trim it. Like I said, we're not gonna take a ton of it off. It is a really well-marbled piece of meat, so we don't have to worry about it drying now. And this is a prime cut, so what I do want to do is take off any little edges there, kind of round it off. We don't want really sharp corners. That's kind of something I picked up from Aaron Franklin watching one of his beef rib videos. It's easier to do this if you uh, have the meat a lot colder than this. I'm kind of out here filming, so it's a little hot. But you know what, if you don't want to trim it, try not trimming it. Um, I think the butcher might have took a little bit of fat off of this, um, off the top, so. I probably don't have to do much trimming. But I will keep that fat and uh, do something with it. See that big layer there? Usually if I can pinch it, I'll take it off. Try to make sure you don't have any divots in it. Um, you're gonna have salt and pepper get stuck in those crevices. Probably won't taste very good. And what I'll try to do is not get down into the meat. That's something you wanna try to avoid, so. Let's stop there before we get ahead of ourselves and start, you know, cutting it down to nothing. So we'll take this fat here and we'll save that. So what you can also do, Butcher has already done this for me, but we want to leave the membrane on these bones. You'll notice towards the end of the cook with the beef ribs that they'll actually fall apart if this membrane's not on here. I probably wouldn't have even scored it, but my butcher has already done that. Um, but you can go through and score this if you want. I think it's time we move on to seasoning. 
So this is probably a hot take for some of you because we're not using a binder. And I know a lot of people think you need a binder, you don't, and it's very, very unlikely that in the late 19th century in Central Texas that they were using a binder. We're just gonna start with some 16 mesh black pepper. You don't have to go crazy like you would if you were making some pork ribs or something. We don't wanna put a crazy amount of uh, seasoning on this. Just cover it, you know, consistently and it's okay if you still see some white through the uh, pepper. Now, I don't normally cook uh, Texas style beef ribs, but I'm excited to try these. And we're looking pretty good there. Now, as that meat sets out here, especially in the heat, it's gonna release some moisture and almost work as its own binder. Next, we have some coarse salt. I got her uh, pretty covered up there. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go get this smoker started and I'll see you when it's ready to throw on. So we've got this smoker running from 275 to 285. Now a lot of pit masters in Central Texas actually run their smokers about 285 to 300 when they're smoking beef ribs. I've seen where uh, Aaron Franklin did that. He usually smoked at 285. There's other places in Central Texas that have stated they smoke at 300. The reason that is there's so much connective tissue in the beef rib that the higher temperatures help break it down. It's not nearly as tough of a meat as a uh, brisket is. So the marbling is a lot better. So it needs those high temperatures. Today we're using the Old Country Brazos, perfect for this video because it's design right there in Texas. So let's go ahead and throw these on the smoker. So when we throw these on here, we wanna put the larger cut of the meat towards the heat. And that's all she wrote. We're going to uh, be back in a couple hours, but we're just gonna let them smoke on. And I'll see you in a few hours. Okay, so these beef ribs have been on for about four hours. Bark is setting those pretty good. I'm gonna start spritzing them with some water and apple cider vinegar. This isn't 100% necessary, but majority of the pit masters that I watch that are in Central Texas, they do this. Plus that apple cider vinegar gives a really nice uh, touch to the fat, cuts through that fat that's in that. There's a lot of fat in these beef ribs. All right, so we'll probably spritz them about every hour, I would say. All right, so we've been at it for a while now. We're probably looking at like nine hours. And I think we can probably go ahead and take it off, but I'm gonna show you how we check for doneness on these. So we don't really care so much about the uh, internal temperature. We really wanna know that it goes in like butter. You should be able to close your eyes and probe it and not even know that you went in. So these are ready to go. I mean, these look like some really good beef ribs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take them in. We're gonna let them rest on the cutting board. If you have some butcher paper, feel free to put them in the butcher paper. We're gonna let them rest for about an hour. Holy shit. That took a long time. We smoked these for at least nine hours. Started them at 2.30. It's almost one o'clock now, so that's including uh, resting them. And I'll tell you, it's not for the faint of heart doing Central Texas barbecue because it's so slow and tedious. It's very simple, but it takes a lot of work. It was nine plus hours of me feeding my smoker logs every 30 minutes and then spritzing every hour. Took a long time, but this might be the prettiest piece of meat that I've ever taken off the smoker. I can't believe that uh, just salt and pepper gave it such a beautiful bark. So the next thing to do is let's cut into these. So a lot of times what'll happen is they kind of pull in and tighten up and one of these bones end up being exposed most of the time. I like to serve these on the bones. I could just pull the bone out, serve it like that, but you know, I like serving it with one big ass bone. But we're gonna try to cut this. Oh man, that bark is just unbelievable. The hell of brisket, man. Be do, do this right here and you won't probably cook another brisket. Mm. Jesus Christ. I mean, that looks insane. Yeah, I'm obsessed with these, man. I'm just, I'm telling you. Hmm, damn. 
damn them is good. Mm. That's crazy. Best things, this, that might be the best piece of beef I've ever smoked. It's crazy. I had a lot of fun exploring and deep diving into what Central Texas barbecue is and how it came to be today. Going forward, I'll probably never cook beef ribs any other way. Those look amazing. Central Texas barbecue might be tedious, might take a long time, it's difficult, not for everybody, but it's so simple. And a long time ago, they figured out that this style works and there's no reason to change it. If you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna be doing more like this and we're gonna be exploring every corner of the planet. So if you wanna learn about other regions barbecue and the history that created and curated that barbecue, make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Fuck, it's late, I'm going to sleep.